Okay, um, I'm, I'm working from an, an assumption this day. I'm assuming that you have added your customers into the, the program. Um, and there are, yeah, this is an annoying thing. It logs me out every so often. You probably experience the same thing. I hate it when I'm doing training and I get an error or something. It just is real <laughs> embarrassing. Um, there are there are basically three ways to import customers into the program to get started. As I mentioned, many of you are probably coming over from um, one of our other clip versions, in which case during that conversion process, we brought your customers and jobs, et cetera, over from your earlier version of clip. Others integrate clip with QuickBooks. And there's the option of importing your customers from QuickBooks or QuickBooks Online. That's a second way to get the customers over. Finally, as far as a mass import, we do allow you to import customers from Excel. This may be relevant to you if you ever are in the place where you might um, acquire another company and have their customers in, a, in, in Excel or be able to put them in Excel. It's easy from that to add them to your customers in Clip ITC. Uh, whereas again, if you're brand new to Clip software, this would be one way to get all of your customers in. And then finally, and we'll look at this tomorrow in more detail, you can add customers individually. So some of you may have manually entered accounts. If you've not, what we're going to cover today is still relevant uh, because there are some preliminaries that you need to, to take care of um, prior to continuing the setup of customers. If you're in a position where you've not added customers yet through those methods already described, that's fine. Uh, this will still be beneficial to you or necessary. The things that are, are necessary to do, but be before I get there, let me um, show you a trick. In Clip ITC, as you see, it's web-based. We're on in Google Chrome and tabs. This We call this a tab. I call these tabs. I call these lower um, links sub-tabs. Now, in your browser, you've got the program open in a tab. Now, as you know, you can have multiple tabs open in your browser. You could have Spotify open or your email open or what have you in, in, in across the top here. In Clip ITC, a trick that uh, we don't always emphasize, you're able to open up the program multiple times in your tabs here. The way you do that is you select where you want to go. So we're dealing with a customer and I want to then look at something in daily routines. You can float your mouse over the, the link and you see you've got that little finger there. If you right click normally to navigate your left clicking for Windows users. You can then select open link in new tab. And now notice what's happened up here. We now have the daily tab open in the program. That way I can toggle between the two and say I want to look at a report. I could come here, repeat the process and here now I have my reports open. This makes it a lot easier if you're talking to, a, if you're doing something in daily routines and the customer calls to navigate to the customer without getting out of the daily routines and you can come back easily to that. So again, the way you do that is you float your cursor over where you want to go, right click and choose open link in new tab to have the program open multiple times in your browser. All right, the things you need to do first off when you start using Clip ITC. Um, one is set up additional users. The users are able, you add users here under the users tab. If you're in the trial period, you can add as many users as you want. Um, if you're paying for Clip ITC, um, depending on the plan you have, additional users would be $20 per month each. Um, to set up a user, you need an email address. Except for the admin, these email addresses can be fictitious. 
basically there are no emails. There is no clipclass.com here, um, but that needs to be in that format. And so you would click add, you would then enter the an email and it could be like bob at bob.com, whatever you want here. Um, set up a password. The password needs to be a combination of letters and numbers and it can be um, eight characters at least. So yep, there you go. Eight characters must have at least one number and one letter. And then down here, you can choose what options you want this user to be able to, to do, what you want them to be able to access in the program. For some of you, your employees will be um, using the app on a phone or tablet in the field, in which case you can just uncheck these, um, these boxes and just leave the mobile app checked. So you can fine tune this um, employee by employee. Typically what we recommend is that you give fewer permissions initially and then add permissions rather than uh, give them too much and have to take it away. Um, setting up someone to use a mobile app then would look like, um, would look like this. And even within the mobile app, and you see these little pluses here, and I think in Safari, it's a little different icon here, but the plus, you click on it, and it will then show you everything available uh, within that category. So again, this way you can um, fine tune a lot of stuff here. So that's the first thing, or one of the early things you should do is to add the employees you need. And one thing that's helpful about that is for the rest of setting up the program, you can have multiple employees working in the program at the same time. There are, I can't even think of any conflict you might have, like you might in a multi-user office-based version of CLIP or other programs. So that's what's nice. You can have folks working in the program simultaneously uh, without conflicts. Having set up users, the next thing you have to have set up are employees. Um, there is an entire employee section in this program. In CLIP um, XE, employees are actually set up in, in what I'll call the customer database. There's a check box that you check if that record is an employee um, and you give the employee then a code and, and the, they should have carried over in the conversion. Um, wh whether they did or didn't, you should set up employees next. So here's the employee section. Um, it comes preloaded because we don't like vacuums or we don't like empty places. So the it comes with employee one as a default employee, which you'll be able to edit. Setting up employee is very easy. You just click new employee here, and then you fill in first name, last name. Um, you've got the date they were hired. You've got birthday field here. Uh, you can put their pay rate in if you want, and this can actually um, flow into some of your job costing. If you want to, you can put city, state, zip, phone numbers, notes. So we got a lot of, of information that you can add here. Not very little of it is essential. I mean, the employee number and the first and last names are in the employee type production versus office. Um, and again, you can put a commission in here if they do sales. Um, so that's how you set up employees there. Now, the final thing that you really have to do um, before you can start um, using the program is to also set up crews. And that's done here under customize. So when I click on customize here, there is a crew section. Um, and then again, it comes with a, a blank crew number one and edit enables you to see all your employees and then you can add employees to crews here. Um, now, one of the first reactions we get, or at least I get when we cover this is the reality that crews vary in who's on the crew on any given day. And uh, the, the let me explain the importance of setting up crews and then we'll talk about how to manage those um, changes in who's on a crew on a, on a given day. 
CLIP uses this information to help you in a couple of areas. One, with job costing. When you do a job and it takes, it lasts from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, that's one hour. But with a three man crew, that job is three man hours. And then on that basis, CLIP will do job costing or if it's a charge per hour job, it will then multiply out three crew members times the one hour on the clock times the hourly rate to calculate what your customer is going to pay you. In some of our other programs, it just allowed you to put in three. You didn't have to specify who was on the crew. You could just say there were three people on it and it would do that. Now we have um, made it such that you need to have the actual number of bodies on here um, in order for that to work. Um, so that's the reality of, of this. Now, let me show you one way this can be managed. So I'm going to pull up um, the Clip ITC app, and this is the Android version. And under the settings gear here, um, you see the employee. So right now, Stephen King is assigned to this crew, crew 20, a plow truck. Well, so let me go into a different crew. So I'll go to Steve's maintenance crew here. So here are my employees on crew one. Um, Adam is not here today. So I'm going to remove him from the crew, add employee, and I'm gonna add um, Stephen King. So he's back on his crew. And so there we are. That's how easy this is to manage. So even though you've set up the crew with certain employees, if you're using the app, it's very easy to modify that. Um, if you're not using the app, but you're working from paper route sheets, um, when we talk about daily routines on Wednesday, we'll talk about managing who's on the crew if you're manually recording. But just to give you a, a, a feel for how easy the app is to use, um, this is how you could manage the employees on that. Okay, um, all right. You have your employees, you choose the crew, and if you need to set up a, um, a new crew, you just come in and hit add, and it will default to a crew number, but you can modify this if it's not already in use. You can create a description of the crew, and then you can cherry pick what employees are on, and they would populate here. So Adam Schiff, uh, Bob Smith, and Jorge are all on this crew. Um, so that's how easy it is to set a crew and then you can choose a foreman. So Adam is a foreman here. You can assign a color so that when you look at the crew location on a map, you can tell color wise which crew is which as well as clicking on the flag representing the crew. Um, so you've got some, some other functions here related to, to crews. Um, all right, so to recap briefly, the three the things you need to set up users employees and then assign employees to crews there are some other things you should do early on now um, what i just have been showing you are necessary for the next steps tomorrow when we talk about setting up pattern jobs because a pattern job requires a crew to be assigned to it and a crew needs to be have employees associated with it so that's why we're covering these uh, preliminaries now but there's some other preliminaries you can do in customize you're able to create a list of materials and you can actually import a list here from um, uh, if you can put it into an Excel format, it enables you to do an import of those. Um, again, otherwise you would come in to the list of materials and you can add them individually. And this is what the screen looks like. If you're adding a chemical or fertilizer or pest control type product, you can pretty much get all this information off of the label and set it up here. Other types of materials you can set up here. So as you see, I've got some um, rose bush herbicides, you know, um, bagging, mulch, etc. Uh, so you can set up. Okay, I'm getting a question here in the chat. Do employees need to be clocked in on the app in order for the man hours to be calculated correctly? 
Um, if I understand your question correctly, TJ, um, I'm going to say no. Uh, by clock in, one thing the app does uh, give you the flexibility to do, you don't have to, is you can go to Dave Barry, he'll actually come here to this time clock at the top, and you can then clock in um, employees for payroll purposes, but they don't have to be clocked in through this in order for you to be able to record times and uh, re so record their production hours. Um, so the answer to that is uh, no, they don't have to be clocked in for payroll purposes to manage their production hours. Now in uh, the materials, you have the ability to do a unit cost and a markup and a price. So this is what you pay, this is what you're charging your customer. You can show whether it's taxable or not. If you no longer use a particular product, you make it inactive and suppress it. You're able to charge the material on an invoice. And now you can tweak this customer by customer. So if you don't have this set up um, in, the, in the pattern, in the material list to charge, you can come into a customer and charge. And then what that means is, for instance, you might have a mulch service, you're charging $150 plus materials. So on the bill would be the $150 for the mulch labor. Then next to that, or just below that on the same invoice would be the actual mulch and how much you're charging for that if you have yes selected to charge material on the invoice there. Um, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. So I just, but I did want to say that this might be something you want to set up early on because then you're able to add material to the pattern job so that when you copy that pattern job into a customer, the materials are there with it for that. Um, another thing you would set up early is the tax list. So here we have, um, over here, the tax list. Now, one thing that the program does require, if you, and this is different for those of you who've, uh, who have our old QClip XE program that integrates with QuickBooks. In QClip XE, QuickBooks managed all of the taxation issues, all the sales tax. In uh, Clip ITC, you actually have to create some tax settings at the customer property and job level. So you would need a tax list. And so here's the tax list area under customize. You would go in here and you know add uh, taxable um, if you have municipalities. I think for many of you, this list may like be populated with all 50 states and all the provinces of Canada and just it might be real cumbersome. I mean, you can delete it from the, the list if you need to, but if you need to add something. So um, let's see, I, you know, I lived in um, Rochester, New York, so that was Monroe County. So I'm gonna call this Mo and then um, just say uh, Monroe County and then the sales tax agency, um, Monroe County. Now, if you do work with QuickBooks, this will be imported from there. And then I can set up a 8.75% or whatever it is and then save it. So now I have Monroe County as an option for my tax rates. And when we look at customers and jobs tomorrow, we'll see how this actually flows into the, the rest of the, the program for that. Um, okay, let me just see what else. Okay, tax codes. All right, we're gonna take a little detour now. Um, up here we have the settings, this little kind of gear. I, I need better glasses because it just looks like an O, but there are little teeth there. So I'm gonna hit open link in new tab. And again, this is going to be um, one of the things you'll want to set up relatively early. Um, I'm going specifically company info here. Um, a question, uh, with the conversion, will the crews re, 
um, already have setup transfer over. The crew numbers will. I don't know if the if the um, employees assigned to them will, but definitely the crews. So if you go into that crew list, you'll already have those crews, and you can add descriptions to them. I believe the 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 um, employees do also, but I, I don't hold me to that. I'm not. I don't work much with the conversion process itself. Okay, so under company info here, one thing you'll find is that the company info. Your, your company name is here, but often the address is missing. So you'll need to come into the company, edit company info button here and put your address, you know, city, state, and zip in there for it to appear on, on invoices or bills and other places where the address is needed. So that's one thing. If you're noticing your, it's not printing out your full address, your full company information, you come in here and, and do that. Um, another area, there are a couple of settings here that we recommend. So we're going to scroll down here to these settings and we'll come back to review these another time. But a couple of things um, you should probably set up initially. Okay, that's interesting. Um, you've got here show on hold jobs. In your customers where they have the list of jobs, you have the option of either showing the on hold jobs in red listed with the active jobs or suppressing them. It's most common to want to show the on hold jobs. So you can come in here and check this and that will be the default to show the on hold jobs as well as the active. Um, another is decimal places for sales tax. Most sales taxes are probably to two decimal places like, you know, 8.25, but there, some are 8.375. And I think we've had even more than that. So here you can put how many decimal places you want for the sales tax. Um, and four is probably more than adequate for all of it. There's no issue if you have four instead of two, if you only have two sales, two places for the sales tax. But if you have four places to the sales tax or three and you only have a two in here, it will then round it up and that you want to make sure you're not overpaying your sales tax. Um, sometimes this is filled in auto finalized jobs. As we'll see under daily routines, you will post the work that's been done. Well, you can set up the program to do that automatically for you at a certain time and day. Um, this has caused some confusion. So in my opinion, at, at least to start out with, it's better not to have this checked. Um, the rest of these we'll look at another time after we've covered some of these different sections of, of the program, but just off the, you know, from the, from the jump, um, show on hold jobs, the sales tax decimal and auto finalize, you should probably address those early on. Um, okay, now with that, actually, and this was, um, I knew this would be kind of a shorter class. So at this point, I have covered what I need to for the initial class and tomorrow we're going to do the customers and jobs and patterns, etc. So what I'd like to do is open it up to questions. So let's see if we can use that in the chat. Um, so let me um, just in case you haven't found the chat, I'm going to send a chat to everybody. All right. So um, any questions that you have, we have, I will say 45 minutes left and the questions can be about any aspect of the program. So if you're a little bit further advanced in setting things up and have a question about recording work or billing or something, I'd be glad to entertain those. So um, go ahead. Where's the company info again? Okay, that's under the settings, this little gear icon at the top. And then over here under company info, edit company info for that's it. Okay. Um, employees do not have to have, okay, hold on. Uh, let me just, employees do not have to have a user ID if they don't access mobile app. Is that correct? That is correct. So users are different than employees. You will have more employees than you have users. Users would be the owner, office manager, you know, office people who might currently use a version of Clip, 
Otherwise, it's like the crew leader would use the app and he can clock in people on that. Um, okay, so um, Jennifer, you had a, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, employees, uh, Jennifer Clark, it's, I've got only a part of a question. When I enter a new customer, parentheses I, and that's it. So if you could finish that, that'd be great. Uh, Bruce, is there a limit to the number of materials you can have? As far as I know, there is no limit to that. Um, when editing a customer, is this done in Clip or QuickBooks? Uh, great question. You can do it in either program. Um, one difference between Clip ITC with its integration with QuickBooks versus QClip XC is that Clip ITC integrates every customer between the two programs. So your customer databases will be identical. With the QClip XC program, our, on, our office based, um, it would not bring over inactive QuickBooks customers. Clip ITC will. Likewise, you could um, have customers in Clip that you didn't send to QuickBooks. That's no longer the case. So everything will go over and you can edit or add customers in either program and they will synchronize. Um, okay, when I enter new customers, there are a place where I can print isolated info for that customer. You know, that's not an uncommon question. So let me just go in. So currently in our online program, you can hit print here and it will then allow you to print a screen like this. Um, this is not currently available in Clip ITC. We have discussed with development about bringing not that screen in, but also um, in the job screen in here, you can print information. Uh, that is on the to-do list for development. Uh, the closest you could come in Clip ITC, and some of this we'll cover um, in the report section on Friday. If you know what information from the customer you want to include, you could then set up a custom report for that. And based on the customer number, just run that report um, you could even do a simple mail merge into Word, which I can. We'll talk more about on Friday. So there may be some workarounds with that that could be acceptable for that. Okay. Um, will employees be entered through conversion? Um, you know, I believe that they will come over, but I have seen cases when they they haven't so i would suggest you ask uh, the member of the support team managing your conversion that question and i'll try to find out uh for to, uh, tomorrow to do that so um let me make a note okay um if we're on a trial version um Will any info entered during the trial be carried over after final conversion? Users will be, but otherwise I don't think so. Um, I will get more information about that to see if any, you know, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna say no to that actually, because one thing they've realized um, early on when we did conversions, we could do an initial conversion, then we could wipe the information out of that copy and do a, a fresh conversion later. Support's been finding that causes some errors. So what they're doing um, is they are actually creating a brand new Clip ITC account to do the second or final conversions. So I will see if that's changed. But so at this point, I'm going to say no that um, that the information will not be preserved that you put in during the trial. Um, do the materials sync as well? The materials that are set up under jobs. I believe do. Um, I'm not sure about the chemicals. So good, good question, Bruce. Okay. Um, let me just see the next. Um, does ITC have a global replacement? feature. Um, yes, it does. Um, just briefly, and we can look at this more tomorrow. The way we handle global replacements, that is uh, making a change in a lot of information at once, is through the patterns. 
So pattern jobs here. Many of you, you've stopped mowing for the year. Well, let's say you want to reset all your mowing jobs for next spring. You can come into the pattern job for mowing here, my lawn maintenance, go to schedule, and you could then change this date to, let's say, April 4th next year. If I save this, check this box, down here it says update all jobs and that would push that new date out to every job that was created based on this pattern. And you could change other things in here. So let's say you decide that you want to um, change the job description from lawn maintenance to lawn mowing or mowing trim all or something. Again, you make the change, save it, check the box and hit update all jobs. So that's one way for global replacements. The um, difficulty with this, unfortunately, compared to the other program, the other program, you could fine tune it. So you could say for active customers, you could create conditions uh, for the replacement. Here, you cannot. Um, you do not have, okay, next one, River Valley. When recording work, you need to enter time, start, and end. Um, you do not have to enter times. You can just mark that a job was done without entering the time. Um, and yes, you can also override the time started and completed. I mean, there are ways you can edit that. We'll look at that on Wednesday with record work for daily. Um, okay, next on our questions. Um, personalization. Um, logos, yes, uh, you can add your logo for the um, um, bills. They they show up in the upper right hand corner. They I think you can add your logo to uh, estimates, but we'll talk about that some um, tomorrow. Uh, the estimates feature. Okay. Um, are there hotkeys for customer notes to add the date and time? Great question. And that was a nice feature of Clip um, XE um, and our earlier versions. Uh, there aren't hotkeys as such. Now, and this is something I need to actually learn. Often within the browser here, if you've already entered information in a field, then the program will remember that and it will then start to automatically fill that field. And that kind of serves the purpose of a hotkey. There's no like time date stamp that I know of uh, in, in the browser, but there is a browser setting I think you can create to autofill that would make a lot of that easier. Not quite as easy as having the function keys like you did in um, Clip XE, but still uh, relatively easy for that. All right, so coming back. Here's going down a little bit. Okay. Um, is there a way to show payment details on an invoice? Um, currently, when you enter a payment here, it's through the single payment section. And you are able to type information here, but frankly, not all of this carries over to the expected places, uh, for instance. So on a statement or invoice, and that is something that we've brought up to development that if you have a memo here, like, thank you for paying with check number one, two, three, four, it'd be nice to put that on the next month's bill when you're showing payments that have come in. So um, at this point, I'm going to say that th this still needs to have some gaps filled in. They don't always show up where they should. So let me um, make a note of that to remind development. They like to hear from our users more than from me. So it's nice for you guys to bring these up again. OK, um, let's see. Um, okay, currently using Clip XE, there's a calendar that we use to see how many man hours we have each day. How do we access that in Clip ITC? Okay, then getting into Wednesday's class under daily, you can create the schedule. So you give the program a date, hit get work, and now here's all the work. But notice this goes back 
a long ways. I can sort it, um, off, you know, by chron chronologically here. Okay, so let's say you want to look and see what hours are are for twelve for um, on November November December sixth. That's done here under adjust schedule. So I give it a date range. So in this case, I want to have December sixth to December sixth, and I hit show jobs. Now under each crew, it's showing budgeted hours here when that's filled in um, and total job values. So this will show you what um, that information, not in a calendar view, but in this list view. And you can actually now move things around also. You could come in here and say, I wanna move these to crew six. So we select crew six. Oh, that's now I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put them, yeah, I'll do crew six. And if I update it in the jobs, it'll make it permanent. So now I hit move jobs and there they are all in crew six. Then what I'm able to do is come back here and um, move these back to crew four. So you can manipulate it here. You can also move it to future dates there. All right, so uh, let me see. Okay, going back to any um, any info we enter during the trial will be lost. Yes, that's that's correct. Um, now, is there a way to record more than one payment at a time? Um, each payment is recorded individually, but you can get a report of all the payments entered by coming to reports and then the payment report. And the payment report actually allows you to um, set a, uh, uh, hours. So if you enter checks in the morning, uh, you know, say this morning you came in, there were checks delivered over the weekend, you posted them this morning, then you enter checks in the afternoon and you posted them then, you can then isolate those two um, sections of when you entered. But no, the, the checks or the payments are entered individually, but they, they are then produced on this report for that. Okay, is there a history screen to see total account history, including both visits made and payments entered? Yes. So if we come here, so we'll go back to, to this, we'll go into a customer, Acme Properties. Here's history. So here's the payment received, here's the services done, installment, etc. So this is a similar screen as to uh, XE. Um, okay, um, Brittany, thank you. Let me, I'll add that to the uh, payment question. Can we create our own printed invoice layout except for the Adding the logo, um, no, you really cannot. Um, if you have ideas for that, please um, email those to me. Well, let me give you my email address. I think, well, you have it because I've been emailing you the, the notice for this class. So, um, John, if you could send me a sample of what you'd like, or maybe you know, if you can mark up a, an invoice with how you'd prefer it to be laid out and send it to me, let me know. Um, those we're always open to ideas, and so um, invoice formatting is something that we know is important to customers. Um, okay, Tim, I'm not sure what you're saying, needs to away. Um, so if you could. Do you close your billing period like XE? Uh, great question, Brittany. And the answer to that is no. So when you do invoicing here, you come into the screen and you can set your information here. So it's defaulting today. Um, let's say you've had a snow event. And for those of you who get snow, you could then come down here to uh, print edit. Let me delete these installments, just I'll cover that more on Thursday, but for now. So I come down here to print edit individual invoices. And I could come in here then, and I can cherry pick what I want to bill. And when I come up to the top and hit print, it bills the customer. 
you don't have to wait till the end of the month. You can create true invoices um, anytime you do billing. So it's a, a, a much more open and free system of doing your billing. Of course, the majority of customers come in here at once a month towards the end and they check all and hit print and they review it. One nice thing in this screen that you're able to do is if necessary, you can come in here and hit the pencil and edit. Uh, add to the description and you can edit um, the pricing if need be. And there are other programs to make any edits in the billing process. You'd have to go to the customer history to do that, which you're still able to do for that. Um, needs a way to change the invoice. Okay. Um, again, um, I am sympathetic to that and I just am not sure why they have kind of locked down a lot of the forms in ITC unlike, unlike XE, but please send me examples of what you would like to see so I can share those with, with um, development and so they can know they're on the right track. Um, okay, we log all calls info we have in customer notes. Do you have a place for that now? Um, Chris, yes. So uh, back to a customer here. Within the customer account, there are account notes down here. Um, and these also can be searchable in the sense that you can pull a report uh, by searching an account notes contains such and such. So in this case, I've got Grub in here. If I wanted to then do a report about accounts with, with Grub control, for instance, I could do that in different ways. One of which is again, custom reports, account notes contains the word Grub and it would pull up this account. Okay, uh, when using the app, we often group jobs together in the form and I've been doing the first thing in the morning and then on the list of the day, they sometimes forget the other jobs that are grouped with a particular job because the jobs, the group do not show on the list. Is there a way to change that? Um, TJ, I think we're gonna have to deal with that offline because I'm not, <laughs> not sure if I exactly understand the situation. But um, again, shoot me an email with that question and I can handle it or talk to support about handling that too. Um, currently, I transfer at the end of the month um, to QuickBooks with XE and invoice to QuickBooks. How do I transfer with ITC? Again, back here to the um, this screen. So this screen here is virtually identical to the um, when you're in update QuickBooks and hit choose. Here's all your unbilled work. So you come in here, check this off, and hit post. Back in Clip ITC, you come in here, check these off. This says generate. And so you click that and then it pushes the information out and then it's received in QuickBooks. Um, yeah, the billing screen is sortable. So you can sort by date here, um, job description, job charge. So in a lot of the column headings through the throughout the program allow sorting. Um, and we'll see that as we go through different parts of it. Oh, okay, John, a question. Um, he says, I was told to apply work to XE and ITC at the same time to keep everything up to par. I was saying that is not true. Um, you're saying it lose everything. Okay. Um, to take a step back, when as an existing Clip user, you contact us to convert your data, there are three things you can then do. Most commonly, what a company will do after their data is converted, they will use Clip XE to run the company day to day, and then they will play around, so to speak, in Clip ITC. They'll run different scenarios, try reports, try to print route sheets. They'll basically have their data there, so they're very familiar with the information with which they're working, but they'll use it to learn Clip ITC. So day to day operations are still managed in Clip XE. Clip ITC, a separate program they're using uh, to learn during the trial period. That's one approach. The second approach, which it sounds like you're doing, John, is that um, you are doing double entry. So as soon as you get converted, you now have two programs, Clip XE, Clip ITC. 
And so what you're doing is if you enter work done in clip XE, you enter work done in clip ITC. If you enter, if you, um, enter a payment in clip XE, you enter the payment in clip ITC. In that scenario, you don't even need a second conversion. So everything you've got, eventually you'll just say, okay, I've got the hang of this, the program's working for me. And you'll leave Clip XE behind and move forward using Clip ITC. So in that scenario, there is no second conversion because you've been staying up to date with that. Um, the third way some companies do, they do the conversion and they jump in with both feet. They stop using Clip XE altogether and just move forward with Clip ITC. And again, in that scenario, there is no second conversion. So I'd say the, the only, um, the situation where there is a need for a second conversion is if during the trial period of Clip ITC, you've been managing your business out of Clip XE and just using ITC to learn, then we would do a second conversion. So for all of you who have panicked, so I, my apologies for not being clear about that. But if you've been entering information in both programs, we won't do a second conversion. So there's no uh, chance that things will be overwritten or replaced or deleted or have to be entered again. Um, so I apologize if that wasn't clear for that. All right. Um, so it seems like the questions and answers have kind of uh, ta tapered off. Um, any other questions um, for us today? Otherwise, we will call it a day a little bit early, and then we can uh, we'll meet again tomorrow. Um, again, in the morning, I will send out another email uh, with the link. So you, it's the same link every class, same phone numbers every class. So if you, whatever you use today, you can use the rest of the week to get in. Um, and again, you do have my email address. So if you want to email me something, you're welcome to. Um, are we required to have a second conversion when using QExpress? Um, uh, stay green, folks. Uh, no, we never really converted you, except, I mean, we did import the customers from QuickBooks. But no, you'll just be staying current. So you're, you're um, the only reason we would do it again would be if, um, well, I can't even think of a reason why we would do a fresh import from QuickBooks. No, you're, you're good to go. We're, there was really no conversion involved like there is for someone who has been using another copy of, of Clip, one of our desktop programs. Okay. Um, any questions I missed? Let me just kind of scroll back. I think I got everything. Okay. Um, okay. Um, no, it looks like we caught everything. For some reason we haven't, let me know. Again, you can email me at billc at clip.com or use the chat or ask tomorrow. Now, tomorrow's class is going to be quite a bit longer. So, um, but I mean, you all have this blocked out in your calendars anyway. Oh, here we go. New message. Can crew compositions be changed for different dates? Um, okay, there are a couple ways for me to understand that question. So when you're in uh, a job, and this is true for pavement maintenance companies, you're able here to change what crew is doing this job on different days of the week. So this is probably obvious to, to most of you, a uh, pavement maintenance company that does sweeping, they may sweep Walmart's parking lot every night, but that doesn't mean the same truck does it every night. So you could assign it to a different crew slash truck based on the day of the week. Now, if what you mean that um, the, the people on the crew change, and it's based on some anticipated date, like, you know, maybe during the fall, some hot college students go back to school. And so, you know, know what that's going to happen and you know who the new crew will be. You can't really set that up in advance. That type of change is done just on a, whenever it happens. Uh, there's no way to plan a future change to automatically be triggered in the program. So if I understood your question, um, okay. Okay, we show me again how to get to select jobs. We send voices to QuickBooks. Sure. Um, 
your tab here will say QuickBooks. And when you click on it, there you have this invoice sub tab. So this is where we're located. And so this invoice information here, a lot of these um, are moot for you. Um, you should come down here and you go to, to, this would say generate. So generate edit individual invoices. And this, this takes you to the screen of all of your unbilled work. And when you do your billing, you can, again, you can come through and cherry pick this. So if you have a snow event, you can just check those off and then hit generate here to begin the process of sending it to QuickBooks. Okay, anything else? Oh, okay. Um, let's see. You know, so thanks. You said on, on Wednesday, the fall cleanup crew are A and B, but on Thursday, are A, B, C. Can it be set up ahead of time? Um, not really. You, I mean, you'll preserve who's on A and B, but on Thursday, you're able to, to add that C is now on there. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, there's no way to, to make crew assignments like day of the week specific and have it automatically. But let me, um, let me make a note of that. That's something just to give to the development. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, um, any last questions? Uh, it looks like we're only spending an hour today, which is great. Um, and then, um, well, uh, why don't we wrap this up? Um, so, and if you have any questions or any comments, if there's any technical difficulties that you were having, you know, please let us know. We'll try to get that uh, taken care of. So, Otherwise, I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. I'm going to close this out. And again, just for the umpteenth time, you know, feel free to email me. Be glad to answer the questions or get it to someone who can. Uh, folks, have a great day, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.